Greetings, everybody. It's a real pleasure to be with you today. Uh, I understand you all are gathered for some conversation and discussion related to cooperatives, and I'm pleased to be part of it. Uh, my name is Bill Gessner. I'm with uh, Cooperative Development Services, and I've been doing consulting work with food co-ops for, I think this is my 26th year, and uh, prior to that I managed a very small retail co-op in North Dakota and uh, managed then went managed a worker-owned produce wholesale co-op in Minneapolis for a while. So I've had a background in both consumer-owned co-ops and worker-owned co-ops and have long been uh, fascinated by co-ops and it's it's been um, as I, as I first began to kind of learn about co-ops and even learn about the co-op principles, uh, I was struck by what a what a beautiful model uh, cooperation is, and and cooperation, the formal model that we practice as cooperators, um, is is really inspiring, and I, I think of the the heritage that we have uh, the, the co-ops that have been formed uh, to meet people's needs for a variety of situations around the world and uh, that I've been able to be part of that and uh, contribute to that, participate in that uh, has been a real pleasure. Uh, when I think about the co-op principles and I kind of go over them every morning when I take a shower, um, you know, just to keep, keep them in front of me. Uh, but the open membership one is one that I like a lot and uh, I was thinking of that the other day and thinking that it really um, such a simple such a simple simple concept and a simple principle and it's beautiful and it was um, by virtue of that principle um, that allowed me to come in and participate with cooperatives and I started thinking of other aspects of our society that might not be, that might not have that principle. And uh, it, it began to have more power for me. And I, I think there's a lot of work that we can do as cooperators with that uh, principle and even make it stronger and more powerful uh, in terms of open membership. Uh, in terms of diversity uh, and bringing people together to have a conversation about cooperation both as a informal everyday practice and as a formal model for coming together to organize and get, get things get things done and meet basic needs the the intersection of cooperation and quality food has been also very, very inspiring to me. Uh, basic need of food and health and sustenance and how we work together as a society to, to bring that about and to, to feed ourselves um, individually and collectively. And so all of that is, is something that I kind of think about um, as I'm doing my work. And it's been a privilege to be able to work with a great number of co-ops, a great many of communities, and to see how people in their individual communities have come together and created a, a cooperative organization, a cooperative business. Um, and as the food co-ops have evolved over the last how many years, um, Walden? Uh, we can look at we can look at forty years. We can look at eighty years. But uh, the different generations of food co-ops. But the and and today we're seeing a, a, a you know a great resurgence in the interest of forming new co-ops in addition to the the you know the three hundred plus food co-ops that currently exist in the United States and. It's a real opportunity, I think, that we all have working together. Uh, how do we project our effort and our energy 
outward into our community. And, you know, there's, there, there are so many people that I encounter uh, that say, oh, yeah, yeah, I've, I've shopped at the co-op in, in uh, Alamosa, Colorado, or wherever uh, it might be. And, yeah, but are you a member there? No, I'm not, I don't, I don't want to be a member. I don't want to be a member of, of the co-op. Why should I do that? I, I shop there every once in a while. It's nice. It's in the community. Um, so that's that's one reaction. Of course, there are all the myths that continue about how you have to be a member to shop, how you have to work at the co-op to be a member, um, and those myths that we're continuously trying to overcome. But building the idea of membership as something of value um, is, is really an important task that requires continuous effort and continuous education. Um, another one of the co-op principles, uh, by the way. The, the idea of membership uh, equaling ownership, I like to try to think of, of membership in our co-ops comprised of three components. Uh, membership equals ownership, membership equals economic advantage, and membership equals service to the community. And if we can bring all three of those together in a way that uh, translates, uh, not just in a prescriptive fashion, but translates in a meaningful way to our community, um, then I think we have something that people will respond to and they will value. The, the idea then of how do we brand um, our, how do we brand our co-ops? Um, and this is something I was in recently in conversation with some of my the people I work with in the CDS Consulting Co-op, and um, we were thinking about the idea of five and ten and fifty years forward, and what do we really want to see? And one of the things that I that kind of came to my thinking was that, boy, I really want to see the co-op brand. Um, really resonate uh, and really be strong and how would I how would I measure that uh, and you know I think at this point we're kind of under the radar um, yet there are you know um, you know more than a million members of food co-ops in the in the country uh, many millions of members of co-ops worldwide uh, yet cooperation is under the radar how do we uh, how do we bring the brand forward in, in, in a way that it really resonates in a meaningful way with people? The so so I would say let's say no, I would like the the co-op brand to be one of the kind of what the thought that came to me is I want the co-op brand to be one of the top five brands, um, you know, worldwide, you know, in the United States and worldwide. Uh, in terms of standing for, you know, um, sustainability, democracy, and community. And, you know, there can be other brands that, that promote those things as well. But I want co-op to be one of the top five. And I think we can do that. Um, and I think we have the the base of people wanting to come together and act out their shared values that, that kind of represent those three elements. Um, and I often think of, when I work with co-ops, I think of the, how many members, how many square feet in the, how many retail square feet and how many, members. And I think of sales and, you know, that's, I like sales too, but, but I want to know how many retail square feet and I want to know how many members. And then I kind of start to envision, um, all those members, uh, you know, standing in the store and the retail floor space. And when there used to be, um, floor tile, that was kind of one square foot. I started thinking of one member standing in each one of those square feet. And how would that be? And what would that feel like? And uh, 
and I looked at food co-ops around the country and saw that kind of did a little little analysis this is 10 years ago or so but I kind of saw that it got kind of crowded when there was one member per per retail square foot and so I kind of looked at maybe the capacity number is uh, hypothetically let's say 0.75 three quarters of a member in a square foot so I've kind of looked at that and I've challenged a lot of co-ops to say where are you at and some co-ops are about one-third of a member per retail square foot so let's increase the number of square feet and let's increase the number of members and let's build a brand that really symbolizes and projects um, you know sustainability democracy and community I think people have a hunger for community today kind of equivalent to the same way that people had a hunger for natural and organic foods when they weren't available. It, it's hard to kind of get your hands around what is this hunger for community. Uh, but if you, if you have discussions about it and begin to articulate it and you translate that into Anne's policies and into a vision, into a shared vision that we all have together, uh, and we do some intentional work about building our brand, you know, we can do this. So, I'm, uh, I don't know if you can see my hat here, but uh, I think it has something to do with co-op, and I'm pleased with that. Um, the words, the words co-op, and the word um, cooperative, and the word cooperation, those are three kind of distinct words. But they all uh, convey something that's essential with around this beautiful idea of that we're all involved in uh, this beautiful idea of cooperation. And so, you know, I have another little thing here. This was on my refrigerator. Uh, that's we own a co-op. We have the twin. And um, you know. There we go. Okay. How about that? Yes, isn't that nice? Uh, it's kind of what I wear on an everyday basis. And um, also proud to say that I still have a cooperative grocer t shirt that I'm wearing. So, anyway, a few, uh, few of my thoughts about cooperation and about brand and and the uh, the beauty of it all so thank you all